Lockdown affected all of us. Spring was just arriving, but the world was put on hold and the rods had to be put away for a while. I was just enjoying some local fishing on UK waters and really getting into thorny weir lakes which were just down the road from me. But the gates were closed, the van was locked up and the rods were put away for a while and I was wondering what to do with myself. We were allowed out for one hour's exercise every day which included a bike ride so that at least gave me the chance to get out and have a look around. Just down the road from me was a little lake that held some very special fish. In particular one I'd seen years ago that first drew my attention to it when it was caught by my good mate Birdie at £36. An amazing fish and he was the only guy that had caught this fish. But it was enough to get me down there and having a look around. It was just a few minutes ride from the house so I could be there in no time every day. And although the lakes were shut to anglers and the gates were all locked, one side of this little lake was public access, meaning that I could get and have a look at at least some of the lake every day. Even though it was still early in the year and the water temperatures were still way down, it didn't take me long to start finding some fish. In fact I was finding them right in the edge and even feeding in the cold temperatures. Amongst them were some lovely fish. The best one I saw was a nice dark looking common in amongst some linears and some other lovely mirrors. No sign of the big mirror unfortunately, but there was enough to get me excited. Each day on my travels I started taking a little bag of bait with me and I was dropping a little bit in here and there on various spots. The signs were soon there that they were really getting on the bait. Little spots that I was baiting were getting cleared out and the clear spots were starting to glow yellow as they increased in size every time. As the weather improved I started seeing the fish more and more. It was quite clear that after feeding they would head to one area of the lake where the sun hit most and they would meet up like meeting up with old friends every day. But because there was no angling pressure and no people walking about it was easy to see the fish they were in a relaxed mood and it was easy to pick out the ones that I was seeing time after time. Lovely dark mirrors and commons. Because only one side of the lake was fishable, there were only a few swims anyway, but I'd worked out which one I would want to fish when the time would come, and eventually lockdown was eased and the time came when we could get the rods out once again, at last. Well, it seems like it's been ages. But in actual fact it's only been a few weeks. It feels a little bit like the old closed season's come to an end and it's the start of the new season. But back on the bank and it's so good to be here again and to have the rods out. Absolutely lovely. I'm in the swim I wanted and things are looking great. Because I've been down so many times during lockdown feeding the fish, of course I really wanted to fish where those baited spots had been. But they were right on the other side, the opposite side to where the swims were. So there was only one realistic way to get the hook baits out there, and that was with the bait boat.
after getting those spots rocking on the other side and seeing the fish so often I was really confident of catching something and it was a matter of when and not if so I wasn't surprised when the next morning I got my first fish from the lake That was a great start and then just a short time after putting that one back I was in again. I was just about to have breakfast. I really thought the chance of a bite had gone. God the weeds only just starting to come up really but it is thick already. Well, I really thought the chance of a bite was over. Just packing everything up, getting all my gear together. One's wrapped off. I've got another fish. An absolute scaly beauty in there. So those first few days were everything I'd hoped they'd be and I caught some lovely scaly carp and the plan was to get back down as soon as possible. Unfortunately the lake got really busy. As I say there were only a few swims on the lake and uh, 
they seem to be full up every time I look so I decided to give it a little rest concentrate on other waters for a few days but keep my eye on the place and uh, when the chance came I was going to get back in there and uh, before too long people drifted away again and the lake was quiet and so I saw my chance to get back there try for a few more of those lovely fish Well, car park was a bit quieter today for the first time and there's a few less people on the lake and I've been checking on the swims and uh, yeah, there's only one guy on the on the lake now so uh, here's my chance to get back on there. Even in the short time I've been away the weed had grown quite a bit and was now up to the surface. That didn't matter, but I actually chose to fish another swim which gave me, I think, better angles to where I thought the fish were. It was quite an awkward swim to fish, meant having the rod tips right up in the air to keep the line, well, over the reeds and over the weed beds as well. And people often say to me, doesn't it spook the fish having the tips up in the air and the lines tight? And the answer is, not really, no. The fish seemed to really notice the drop in angling pressure again and was showing around the areas where my baits were so I was pretty confident again and sure enough the plan worked. had a proper battle with this one somewhere in there looks like a nice fish oh yes yeah that's that's an original though that is ah oh, that's absolutely brilliant scrap that was and what a fish <laughs> I'm quite worn out now but, uh, oh it's beautiful yeah that's a, a proper old original that is there we go what a lovely old fish and they are old these ones don't know how long these have been in here but a long time and it's always the old originals that we want in it. And there we go, there's one of them. 27 and a quarter. A cracking old black America up there. Well chuffed for that. A bit of two tone on this side. I'll just turn him round and uh, show you that. In the lovely scales. What a fish. Absolutely beautiful that is. Very, very happy with that. Tired, 
I've had a few people say to me that when it comes to the rig section in my videos they uh, tend to fast forward through it because it's always the same rigs and uh, yeah I guess that's true for a lot of my trips and uh, I did start off using uh, my old standard sort of uh, well coated braid straight through and uh, bottom baits but that wasn't what they wanted here and uh, well pop-ups definitely been the way forward that all the bites I've had here have I've been on pop-ups and uh, when it comes to those you know I've just gone back to what is my old faithful pop-up rig really I've used it for years the old hinge stiff rig and uh, you know it's got a chod section there chod link section of about three inches I suppose to a, a uni ring swivel uh, and a size 8 uh, claw hook and the boom section is a skin link, 25 pound skin link section so there's a little bit of play in it but it's still fairly stiff at the same time. Now I'm actually fishing this helicopter style and um, it's, it's not a, a setup that I've used a great deal over the years but then I haven't used pop-ups a great deal either so so there we go but um, I'm not a great fan of lead core or uh, you know leaders of any sort so I'm still using tubing I like to use tubing and this is just the uh, decam tubing I've penned it over with a bit of a uh, indelible marker just to colour it up a bit camouflage it don't need it but um, you know just a bit of fun <laughs> I've had plenty of time to do very little so I've, you know messed about with different stuff um, lead on the bottom I've got three ounce there I've been using sort of between two and three ounce leads on the bottom and uh, that just runs down to a bead I've got a fairly sort of stiffly fixed bead about an inch up from the lead inch and a half the top bead runs up and down fairly fairly loose so that in the event of a break that can just run up straight off the tubing and the hook length can come straight off you know so I like that aspect of it the safety bit you know I've, I've got a fair run on that about eight inches and that's literally so that just there is a fair bit of weed out there on the bottom you know I'm trying to find clearer spots as possible um, as that sinks down to the bottom you know it's got that bit of play in it and you know some people worry about um, how much play a rig has got well all the bites I've had have been absolute stormers, absolute screamers, so you know, it's been working very well actually, so uh, anyway, yeah, you know, four nights, something like nine bites now, so all on that rig, definitely been doing the business that has. The other thing that's very important to this, this whole setup and, and the runs I've been getting are the hook baits, and during lockdown, of course, I had loads of time to do virtually nothing really. Uh, I was coming down here and baiting up different spots on, on the areas that you can get to on the public access points. Um, but while I was at home, for the first time in ages, I made myself some little pop-ups. And I always used to love making my own pop-ups. I always felt that my own personal little touches got me more bites. And so that was what I did. You know, I've got some uh, pop-up mix, well I got it ages ago of Gary Bay's and uh, some of the hook bait kit as well, the Scopet Squid hook bait kit, sort of mixed them together 
along with the liquids, you know, the scopic squid and uh, various other little bits and pieces. You know, squid powder as well, you know, that's, that's such a good attractor, the squid powder, that, you know, boosted them up with that. And I know it was quite a tiresome job making pop-ups in the past, because I'd done it for so many years, I actually really enjoyed making them. And, uh, you know, they just smell extra strong, extra fresh, and, uh, you know, well, all of the fish, all of the bites I've had have all been on those, so, little hinge stiff rig, homemade pop-ups, and uh, they're doing the business. <laughs> yeah, I can see a tail. He's... Oh, lovely linear, beautiful. I know this is definitely one of the fish that I was seeing a couple of times when I was uh, coming down and baiting up during the lockdown and having a little look and. I see this lovely linear um, a couple of times, two or three times. And I thought to myself, you know, that'd be an absolute cracker to catch that one. Sure enough, here it is. a nice way to end the session on there. God, it's been a good trip. I was wondering if I was going to get a bite at all. And I've ended up having, uh, what have I had, seven bites in two nights. Whew. A couple of little ones, a couple of good ones, an old original, and this beautiful linear to finish up with. So, here we go. Happy days. Yeah, it was really good to be back. Seven bites in two nights was way beyond what I was expecting to get, and it was brilliant. So I thought to myself, I've got to get back there for at least a night or two. So uh, two days later, I was back for an overnighter. Well, yet yeah, another eventful morning. This time, I got my first common from the lake. Oh, there's a couple of decent commons in here. This one's <laughs> very lively. He's only just over 20 pound, 20 pound 12. But yeah, cracker all the same. <clears throat> Another nice dark one, just like the mirror's all dark. Oh, 
And there's another one of these lovely gorgeous mirrors. They are really nice. Certainly one of the stockies this one. Another linear as well. Absolutely cracking fish. 24 pound. Nice fat fish as well. And uh, yeah, it's, it's funny how the, the runs come on here because this was the furthest rod away from where I saw this showing. And yet, you know, I stuck to it, I left it there, wondering whether I should move it, and uh, you know, this rod produced two in about ten minutes. So, uh, you know, obviously they, they show in certain areas, but they'll move off and feed in others. So, there we go. What a cracking fish, eh? Next time down, and there was only one guy on the lake again, but unfortunately he was in the swim where I'd had all the recent action from, so that swim was out of the question. So instead I went back to where I'd done the restart, and uh, hoped that there was still a fish or two in there for me. I couldn't get in the swim I wanted yesterday evening um, but there was only one guy on so still a couple of nice swims free and uh, never saw anything show at all but this morning one's rattled off anyway and yeah beautiful dark common just the one bite nothing all night just one bite just now, but, um, but a cracking fish, so we're happy with that. As it turned out, this was the bigger common that I'd seen feeding in the spring, and along with the linears and the old original, this completed the fish that I'd really seen and wanted to catch. Having not seen the big mirror still, I had decisions to make. Beautiful. Still quite early morning, view from the bivvy. Yeah, just starting to get my gear together actually. It's uh, due to rain quite heavy today. It started on and off this morning already, so I don't want to get caught in it. So I'm gonna get my gear together and, and pack up. Just looking out of way. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed my fishing on here, to be honest, and uh, well this, well, could well be the last uh, little trip down here for a while. Uh, caught a big common yesterday and that was the one that I was seeing when I was coming down, the biggest fish I saw actually. So that was sort of one of the targets, one of the main targets and you know I've caught that now. It's a shame to pull off really because I've actually really enjoyed fishing on here since uh, really going right back to the Mia. You know it's hard to find anything that I could really get into. And I've sort of got into this right from the start, sort of coming down, watching them, feeding them, um, watching them clear the bait, moving on to sort of catching them in the end, you know, and I've, I've caught quite a few of them now, and I've caught the ones that I sort of picked out that I'd like to catch, so it's been, it's been great. It's been a long campaign, but it's been a good one. And uh, yeah, thanks to Dave Vaughan and uh, all the Baelish really, they've all been good guys, you know, and it's been nice 
seeing them and uh, really nice fish in this place you know it's a cracking little place the fish are lovely and uh, you know I've been fortunate enough to see a few of them yeah really enjoyed it but there we go you know trips away will be starting again soon it sounds like the borders are opening so I'll be able to load the van up Joan and travel away um, and hopefully get back down here a few more times in the future but for now um, yeah, I think it's time to call it a day on here, but it's been fun. Really enjoyed it.